Right, so Model X. Um, the Medit are actually much more modular and it's easier to deal with. Um, so you've got, okay, let's see. So in the previous video, you saw it like that basically. And it's three, and then there you got the three nuts in there. Okay. And then <coughs> you've got these uh, 10 mil uh, nuts that go in here. Okay. Go right in there. See? Um, all the way around, pretty much. Uh, the uh, two, there's a couple of coolers which have um, these things basically. Which are, oh, let me just, uh, if I just can I sit back? Yes, I can. Uh, so you can see here. <coughs> so they're just, the, it's like, uh, where are we at? It's this one. One of them like that, and another one like that. I don't know which way around they are. Yeah, but basically they go on there, and you can see we've got torxes on there. They're just for circulating the cooling. This is going to be the IGBT under here. It's probably a single module. Um, rather than multiple half bridges or single units. Uh, this thing here, that, that covers over that. I don't know what that is. I mean, I don't know if it's some sort of reset that you press or something like that. I don't know. Not sure about that. Be interesting. Obviously, the power we can see there, which we can't. Maybe under there somewhere you got orange. These are the three phase out. They connect up to those things, these things here, which you undo. You have to undo those to get the inverter off. But basically, yes, it's it's all of these 10 mils plus these three, and then it comes away. And look at that. See? Now that's the better way to do it. So this is the speed sensor, and then here, that's probably temp. And they come in from this side. That's the better way of doing it. Why couldn't you do that way in the first place? Uh, we've got something here that's machined down nicely. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe there was a bit of a clearance issue or something. I just want to make sure that... Things didn't spark or something, I don't know. I didn't cover it in plastic though, which is quite weird. Um, to stop any shorting. But obviously that's the axle to the motor. <clears throat> Probably goes through the gearbox and comes out here. Um, and then we've got what appears to be a couple of pinions there. And then you've got the diff there. So the diff gear obviously goes around. Oh, sorry, you went a bit too close. Diff gear obviously goes around there. So we've got a pinion there engaging it there. And we've got something else that's obviously some sort of a gearing system there uh hmm, there's a bit of a not sure what's in there there might be a locking pole or a parking pole in there something like that sometimes they put those in i don't know but i'm not seeing any electronics to that and it would need that if i wanted to actuate it so no maybe not uh, possibly it's just oil feed or something they've got the oh they need a there's, a there's a pump isn't there ah there's a pump so i'm guessing behind there is the oil pump the one that circulates the oil although I'm not seeing any power to it so again it must be mechanical yeah that's a bit crap I thought it'd be electric anyway didn't I okay so obviously three phase input we'll get that spinning probably later today uh, and we've got a temp sense which is it's going to be a thermistor that obviously into the uh, what is that two connections yeah two connections there so that's just a straight thermistor into the uh, Looks like it's, it's obviously de detecting the oil. Um, this is the bottom, actually. So it might be an oil level sensor, but I doubt it. It's more likely just a thermistor to detect the temperature. And this one's definitely a speed sensor. <coughs> yeah, you see? Now, that's right next to the inverter, because the inverter's here. So even though these wires are actually quite long, they could have made them very much short. They've obviously lengthened them just to make sure you can bring this away. And you can get into it and disconnect them. That's fine. Uh, but that, I mean, they haven't even used screened leads in that because it's just here. And obviously all the metal does the screening as well. Um, so much better. And uh, we could actually mount our own inverter onto there quite easily. Straight into the three phase there. You've got your speed sensor and you've got your temp. It's pretty much all that you need. Um, I could even reuse this casing because it's got the uh, uh, heat sinking on it as well. Um, but my guess is I've got a three-phase inverter under there. It might be an IPM module. Uh, if it's a three-phase uh, inverter unit, like an IGBT module, then I can just simply put my own... Uh, oh, and there'll be a gate driver board on it as well, of course, because there usually is. So I could put my own gate drivers on there and my own logic module on the top, and then it would work. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> 
this is uh, just to recap this is a model x and we're just delving into it basically we've lost a bit of fluid there as obviously you can see there's the uh, coolant and this is the oil uh, basically it's come out through the diff it's not concerned you can always replace that that's no big deal um yeah um so yeah uh i'm not going to be going into the mechanical side of it uh, because i'm not interested in that really um but needless to say it's only going to be just a like a, a single ratio or maybe a, there's another one in here so you've got a double ratio there i'm pretty sure the specs are there usually it's just a single pinion you know that you have the axle uh coming out here which has a um a small pinion on it and then you have a large gear with a small gear on it as a as a drop down and then you either this side or that side or both and then it connects to the diff i'm not expecting any surprises there so i'm not a big deal there um yeah it might be interesting to see what's inside there but i pretty much know what it is basically you've just got around the outside you've got your stator fields and then in the middle of the, there's a um a um, three-phase rotor uh, this is ac induction not brush but uh, not a brushless dc uh, because they didn't start doing brushless dc in any shape or form until they got to the model three or the model y i don't know which one came first so model x's and model s's are all ac induction the newer versions might actually have newer ones but this is uh this is a 2018 isn't it yeah t18 means it's 2018 uh, so this is before they started going down the route of using brushless DCs. Yeah, there's an extra claimed efficiency. Um, yeah, they they do actually. I think brushless DC motors do have a slight uh, efficiency gain over um, the uh, AC induction motor. And I'm saying slight AC induction motors. <clears throat> you're talking about the difference between like 90 and 95 percent efficiency. So whilst you, you can claim that you've had a 100% or a 50% gain, whichever way you calculate it, this is already bloody efficient. <laughs> and so, you know, compared to a piston engine, you know, forget it, 90 to 95%. The difference might be in extra range slightly. Uh, you, you're talking about a 5% gain on the range, uh, which would probably be soaked up by driving style. You can certainly increase your range by just altering your driving style by far more than 5%. Um, and also you've got uh, <clears throat> um, the uh, the battery efficiency as well. Lithium batteries are actually more efficient. Uh, they uh, they will give you a more return on your charge, um, but you can gain that through that. So a five percent gain in efficiency. I'm not sure if that's actually really the offset is that they're more expensive because they have permanent magnets inside, which are made of um, I believe it's cobalt some sort of a cobalt uh, compound uh, to make the magnet or neodymium perhaps a combination of the two um, whereas an AC induction motor it's just copper windings and and pretty much that's it and and, and steel for the uh, for the laminates uh, so AC induction motors are actually considerably cheaper and so uh, but again I was talking about that inductor uh, the uh, AC uh, three-phase uh, inverter over there why wouldn't they spend an extra, you know, 500 to 1,000 pounds to make it a, a much more maintainable module? Don't know. And they may use the same argument here. Why can't they use a brushless DC, which might cost, say, I don't know. I mean, that base motor, I'm guessing, manufacture of that in a one-off will be about somewhere between 10 to 20 grand, I would think, given the power output of the motor. But if they're making them themselves and they're mass producing these, you're talking about probably about a tenth of that um in terms of cost to themselves once they've got the initial design worked out and all the castings and everything <clears throat> yeah which means that it's going to be like one to two grand really for that to mass produce um brussels dc i would say is about twice that uh for the cost and the magnets themselves do actually degrade that's the thing that's the reason why you know like yeah how how quickly they degrade is actually uh, debatable because no electric car has been that long i've got a nissan leaf there you can see in the background uh which is um uh you can see that's a 2011 we're now in 2020 so that's like nine years old and the power of the motor is still there it's not degraded i i would think 
Um, if an, uh, a brushless motor lasts 50 years before we started noticing any de degraded performance on the motor due to the magnets. And so you could argue that, well, you know, a car won't last 50 years, so what's the point sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, the cars don't last 50 years right now, but I just took apart a milk float, <clears throat> which is still serviceable, which was manufactured in 1985. I didn't do it today. It was about five years ago. So that would have been in 2015 that I actually did it. Uh, it might not have been, it might be like 2010 or something. But the point I'm making is, is that vehicle was still serviceable. Um, what would that be about uh, 35 years later? You know what I mean? So if you're going to say, well, you know, cars will not last that long. Well, that milk float did. You know what I mean? And people do keep uh, cars on the road. The only reason why they don't at the moment is because... Uh, piston engine cars, the engines themselves are poor. Uh, you know, if you can get a car that can last 10 years, you think you're doing well. You know, but most people, they replace their cars at sort of a three to five year mark, don't they? If they get a brand new one. So they don't expect it to last that long. To last 10 times that is just unfeasible in, in the average person's mind uh, because they just currently don't. And that's fair enough. They're not part of the technology, so they don't. But anyway, so there you go.